Holla bro, holla bro, holla bro, holla bro, grotto show. Holla bro, holla bro, holla bro, holla bro, grotto show. Hello and welcome to the Hollow Grove Grotto Show. My name is Al. What up, nerd? <laughs> Hold on. That was so bad. Is that not what you were expecting? <laughs> well, no. Keep it, it rolling. Out. Keep it rolling. Your, your mic cut out a little bit. Keep so. it rolling. What up? I'm Bird. Okay. I'm Al. Uh, welcome to our podcast. And this is uh, a new territory for us. And we're super excited to be here um, starting out. And... Yeah, we're just going to be hanging out. Uh, we don't have too much uh, plans for this. We've always wanted to do a podcast, so here we are. We experimented a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago, tried it out, and we really liked it. So we're here and we're back, and hopefully you guys will have a good time listening. By the way, so, uh, Al, Al yeah. Abaster, I got a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. Have you gotten the grade on your, on your uh, project yet? Mm, yeah yeah so i got uh like I, please I, share i mentioned to <laughs> i mentioned a bird um this our our experiment with this podcast was in a different previous episode it was a demo and uh for that class it was very weird the, the the professor is super super cool super chill to the point where the class actually had no grades like for pretty much anything it was basically if you did all your work and it was up to par. Like she would pull you aside and tell you if there was something that needed to be better standard. But <laughs> as long as you did your work, then at the end of the class, you'd basically just get me. So, oh, it was, it was, it was like a, it was on a vibe system. Yeah, a very very heavy vibe system for sure. She was super chill. It's super funny. Um, so it was a very good class. So yeah, I ended up getting an A for the class. I could not tell you what I got for the project for sure. <laughs> okay. You get any? Did she give you any notes on it? She didn't. No, no notes. No Dude, notes. She must not um, have been impressed, which I, I don't I don't blame her. Even I though guarantee. we hit the we hit the hard hitting topics in that and had some pretty uh-huh. deep conversations. But overall, it's hard to get past your mic quality. I'm sorry, man. But <laughs> my, I'm, my glad, I'm glad I'm glad to yeah. hear that we're we're up to up to scuff on this one. Yeah, I guarantee that she liked it. She just uh, had like so many final projects to grade that she probably just didn't get feedback for the final projects. So now I feel that oh, uh, there's a lot going on nowadays. Yeah, there's a lot going on now. A lot of mayhem. I bet she didn't even listen to it all. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. She probably just like scanned the first like five minutes, made sure the yeah. vibe was there, checked out the the mid roll in the middle. She, she uh, heard the she heard the jingle and was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, she knew it was legit. Oh, um, this this episode's gonna have a new jingle, even though that yeah. already happened in the beginning of this episode. That I'm gonna, I'm, yeah, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put it in. To put it in. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> it's not done yet. So but, yeah, the Hollow Grove Grotto show. What's up with Hollow that? Grove Can you tell show. me, bro, bird? What what's up? It's it's that? uncharted territory for all of us, and we're about to be digging through it. Yeah, the Hollow Grove Grotto. The Hollow Grove Grotto. Yeah, and the idea of being inside a grotto being inside a cave is our dream we always wanted now, to be what does being inside a grotto mean to you in being inside a grotto to me physically it's like a yeah. a spiritual connection to to openness specifically reverb to the point where I that comes through yeah specifically i just want to be placed in, a, in the middle of a cave with a mic and just natural reverb take its place that's the goal Unfortunately, uh, I I cannot attest to me being inside of a giant cave right now. But yeah, you live in a city. Mentally. Yeah, city now. I just your city uh, slicker. I'm a city slicker now. Just moved from uh, from being in the the woods, basically back home, to now being uh, in the the big old city down in the southwest. Yeehaw! Um, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I'm honestly about incredibly happy for you and uh, incredibly envious, to be honest. Mm, yeah, I mean, I feel that there's a lot of stuff that's bad about big cities, so don't be too envious. But yeah, other than that, it should be pretty cool. Right now, I'm personally in self quarantine, so because I had to fly here from what was quote unquote a hot spot, um, so I had to self quarantine for two weeks, and that ends in uh, two days. So after that's over, I'll actually be able to buy groceries and stuff. Um, so that'll be cool. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm looking forward to at the end of all of this 
uh, crisis stuff going on, being able to explore the city once it's all over. Because I think it'll be very beautiful. I've heard a lot of good things about here, so it'll be pretty cool. And uh, what city were, were, were you in now, if you don't care sharing? I don't remember. Um, I don't mind sharing too much because <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's a big city. It's a big city. Real Austin. big. Yeah, so things yeah, are bigger Austin. down there. It's a big tech city, Austin, Texas. Um, Austin. Yeah, I knew it was. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's Austin, but I wasn't sure if it was Austin or Houston. Yeah. Because you were talking Houston, about both. Huge. Yeah, Houston's huge. Yeah, me huge going to Houston, Houston was. Yeah, going to Houston was really fun. I really, really liked the vibe there. It just didn't work out like professionally. There weren't really yeah. very many opportunities there. Um, so yeah, Austin got the tech, tech no. the Texas tech. Yeah, not only tech, but there's a lot of startups. There's a lot of marketing. There's a lot of everything. Me being a writer, just finished mm-hmm. up. I just I just graduated what like two days ago. Um, That's so got cool. my bachelor's. Two days ago, English. dude. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, dude. Had two my virtual wow. virtual commencement. Imagine uh, now how going was to that? I'm, I'm very yeah. curious how that how that went. The first word that comes to mind is, is cringy for sure. It was pretty cringy. Um, they it was supposed to be and it was sort of, but it was supposed to be like just a live stream virtual commencement. Mm-hmm. And the first like half hour, forty five minutes. I don't remember how long it was. Might have been even a full hour. Was just pre-recorded videos of like staff faculty and like people who are graduating like submit their videos of saying congratulations but since no one <laughs> saw each other's video everybody ended up saying the exact same thing you know no that, that I absolutely just on repeat sense. yeah it was it was really oh, congrats but this I, is the, the beginning of the rest of your lives Woo! Yeah, and then, and next, then the next it's the exact same thing <laughs> yeah that's funny <laughs> yeah it was all about all about the crisis as well and being able to persevere we're in this um, together yeah, we're in this together. So hey, yeah, don't very... forget it. Everybody listening at home, we are in this together. We are not physically. I, I meant physically. <laughs> not... I meant physically. Oh, okay, physically, sure. Um, no yeah, homo. The, um, yeah, no homo. The <laughs> rest of the commencement went pretty fine, though. Like once I got to the live stream part, um, it was it was definitely fine. Um, like the. There was the president talking, um, which our, our president is a little, he, he's, he's, he's pretty cool. He's, he has a little bit of swag to him. Um, and the guest speaker was like the, I think it was like the president of our class or something like that. I don't even know who it was, to be honest. Um, okay. That's not a but, very yeah. guest speaker. A fellow um, student? Well, she, yeah, she, she was a guest speaker. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. The, um, the, the guest speaker. Yeah, the guest <laughs> a speaker. fellow student. Was, was uh, Tim Cook, the uh, CEO of Apple, um, which was pretty cool. I honestly didn't really know what to expect because him being just a CEO of like a big business, I wasn't sure what mm-hmm. he would have to say, especially especially for being like a CEO for like a tech company. So I, I was wondering if he was going to have like a bunch of specific like maybe recommendations or like inspiring words for people who are in STEM. But it was a pretty overall really good message. Like his his okay. speech was really good. I was actually really impressed by it. And uh, my former my former boss on LinkedIn was like kind of like uh, commending him as well online, and I agreed. He did a very good job, Tim Cook. Um, so you you uh, legit legitimately use LinkedIn? Um, legitimately use or uh, I, seriously? Like I I, see- I remember I heard about it like when I went to college yeah. the one year, but we never used it like seriously. I seriously use it for job hunting. Um, okay. As far as anything else besides yeah, that, I, don't I feel really... like it's probably a, a good tool, but I've never used it because yeah, I just it's very good for job hunting. Yeah, really? it's very, okay. very, very user friendly stuff like that. It's very clean, easy to search for stuff. Yeah. I feel like when you get past like entry level, it probably is a little more important. Yeah, um, even for lunch, entry level is good though. Um, but as far as like a, a social media, I don't really use it that much. Okay. I just yeah, I would never <laughs> imagine when I first imagine on browsing then, it. You yeah. gotta browse a uh, LinkedIn like like an Instagram or a Twitter. <laughs> Once you have enough like people on there, which I I have a bunch of people that I don't even like personally know, which is kind of why I feel disconnected from it at times, which mm-hmm. is probably a mistake on my part. But that just connection. That's a whole nother story. But like the the actual like basis for what I see on LinkedIn for like a day to day like uh, perusing it is just basically like one person or another getting congratulated for their position 
or for graduating or doing something. So it's all pretty much every day. There's a congratulatory message of something. Yeah. So it's like Facebook happy birthdays only. Yeah, exclusively. And then there wow. are some, there are some like intellectually stimulating stuff. Like my, my former boss is really cool. Uh, he's a copywriter. Um, and that's what I want to be getting into as well. Um, mm -hmm. but he is a very good writer. So usually when I see his articles and stuff on there, I'll read them and stuff like that. So okay, uh, that's cool. Other than that, I don't. So maybe I'll use it more in the future, but I don't know. It's not, it's yeah, not the hope is that you don't have to use it. Like you get a good job and you don't have to use it to get any yeah. other jobs. The biggest thing is just about keeping connections with, uh, yeah with jobs and employers and former employees and stuff. Valuable allies. Uh -huh. Assets. Yeah, assets. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I use LinkedIn for. And the, the commencement okay. went well. Uh, Tim Cook was cool. And then that was yeah, it. That was pretty um, much. I'm, it glad was very... you brought, I'm glad you brought Tim Cook back up because I wanted to talk about him. Uh -huh. So I don't know really anything about Tim Cook, but I do want to say I'm a bit of a, of a Steve Jobs fanboy. Just uh -huh. a little bit. I'm just a little bit of a, yeah. a Steve Jobs fanboy. Yeah. So, like, naturally, Steve Jobs died, and I felt really bad about it. I'm sad about it. Mm -hmm. The new guy comes in, fresh meat, rookie. <laughs> yeah, I new guess... kid on the block. I'm not. I'm not for him yet. Even though it's been several years, I'm not. I'm not for him yet. He hasn't yeah. quite won you. me over. He yeah, seems kind of like a speech though. He's like um, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, you know? <laughs> I, I get you. But he also did have like a very touching moment. It was, it was a little, a little, uh, little sad, but also like uh, mm. heartwarming where he, he did talk about um, Steve a little bit and um, kind of like uh, Wait, comparing. Did he know Steve? Uh-huh. Uh I think so. Okay. Yeah. He did know Steve. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he talked to him. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> in the speech. So. <laughs> I was thinking for a second, maybe he made up. I don't. I don't know anything about Tim. Why Cook. wouldn't he know Steve? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he got hired after he was oh, hired after. I got you. Yeah. yeah. No, he talked about like, uh, like when we lost Steve, and talking about like how how hard that was for the company and for him personally and stuff. Oh, and that's kind of sweet. Like relating that to it, yeah. So he was he was very like uh, he was very sweet about it. So okay, I'm yeah. starting. I'm starting to figure this guy out. Yeah, but it, so the, the, graduation, the ceremony kind of was a little bit unsatisfying, though. I mean, as you could imagine, just because it basically just like was that, then the president spoke again, and then it was basically over, and that was it. Like, there's yeah. nothing I can do. I'm just sitting here at home watching it, and I'm in self quarantine now. It's not like mm -hmm. I can even have people to like celebrate it with. Yeah, were you in a capping down? No, absolutely not. No capping down. Okay, absolutely not. I think I was in sweatpants and possibly a tank top at the time. Okay. So that was fun. Comfortable. That, Yo, is it hot down there? So, yes, to answer your question. When we when I first got here, like it was so hot. It was like 95 when I got 95, here. jeez. Yeah, it was so hot. But since then it's gotten very good. Like the past 5 days it's been perfect, like such perfect weather. It's like okay. a slight, a very slight chill in the air and like very warm sun, which is like right, right where you want it to be. Um, and it's mm. pretty windy here. So the breeze is always strong. And um, personally for me inside, I've never been anywhere like, like back home. Uh, I always would have like the air conditioner turned pretty far down just out of habit or basically so like air conditioner finally. down. That means what temperature like are you running your place like 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 70 pretty low yeah 70 like 69 okay. 70 69 uh, 70 okay that's probably yeah, about where my house here, is. here it feels really comfortable already at like 77 wow surprisingly yeah i don't know why maybe it's just hot. because you're already here and it's already hot so once you're in like somewhere it's cooler it just feels good and also the place that i have here is like very open it's very open so Maybe that has something to do with because back home I was more in like a tighter space and it got very yeah. very hot very easily. But here, yeah, we just keep it on like seventy seven, and it's it feels huh. fine. We put the ceiling fans on and it feels and we open the windows. Ooh, like we have fans. all the windows open. Yeah, and windows. I got the hook up here, dude. Yeah, it yeah. it's all sounds so nice to me because I live in a basement with no windows or, <laughs> yeah. or fans I, or anything. I li I lived in the attic previously, and the yeah. attic was so fucking hot no matter what I did. Oh yeah. I mind it's always freezing down here. In the summer it's lovely, but winter it's ice cold. Yeah. 
and there's basically no winter here, so uh, that's fun. It just yeah. Becomes... How how warm? Well, how cold does it get in the winter? It's a good question. I think probably that like it no gets... no colder than fifty, right? Definitely not. I don't think. I think it probably stays right around there, if not even wow, slightly warmer or something. But yeah, when we got here, it was super hot, and then it's kind of mellowed out, and then the summer is going to start, and it's going to be super hot again. Um, so prepared for that. I think once Which... June rolls around, I'm going to be melting. Mm-hmm. But how hot does it get? Um, well, like I mentioned, it was 95 when we got here, and it's in May <laughs> already. So once it gets to July or August, I think it's probably going to be in the uh, like 105s, maybe. I'm guessing. I don't know. Wow, that's Something too like hot. That. <laughs> Pretty hot. But Not also, then again, I haven't been outside. I mean, I go out onto my balcony that I have, but I, yeah. other than that, I haven't been outside too much. So I feel I can't like it'll be, it. it'll be a little bit of an adjustment, but I think you got it in you. For sure. I got it in me. I'm going to burn because I'm a, I'm a ginger down here, but uh, yeah. Oh, just down that, there. Yeah, specifically down here, I'm ginger. Well, it, that's <laughs> what, it kind of doesn't matter too much when I'm back home because it's not so hot. Um, but down here, it's, it's pretty blistering. Yeah, I got sunburned awesome. the other day. It was like 65 degrees, and I was outside all day, and my face mm-hmm. got so sunburned. Yeah. I even I'm put on about. sunscreen. But I think that I should be fine, especially if I wear sunscreen, and I'm just careful about being in the sun a whole lot. And also, I'm not even certain that we're going to stay here forever. Either. We're yeah. basically testing the waters here, going to a big city, coming from That's the somewhere dream. smaller. So. I want to do like um, short residencies in different places. Like I think in about a year, I think that's what I want to do. I've been thinking about it a lot lately, actually. Uh, I want to like, I want to go, I don't know where I want to go first. I'm thinking maybe somewhere like Montana, somewhere random. Just to like go and yeah. And I might do like, like two months, three months, like Airbnbs. Cause you Mm. can actually get like Airbnbs and stay in them cheaper than like rent most of the time. Like, and you're not committed to a lease or anything. You're just committed to, like, a month. And you don't need yeah. furniture. Use their furniture. Yep. But you look at a place like Peru. <laughs> and uh-huh. you can stay in, a, in like, a, a one-bed apartment. What a jump. For, like, 500 a month. But it's, like, yeah, it's way up, like, 14th floor, beach view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, they look super nice. Like, it's not yeah, like you're do. living in a hut. Like, it's super nice yeah. in a city. And the it's like five hundred a month in, in, in Peru, a whole another yeah. country. Yeah, that speaks a different language. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what they speak in Peru. It's not Portuguese. Impossible. They probably speak Spanish. I don't see why they wouldn't. Spanish or I Portuguese? I'd bet. I'd bet money on both of them, and then win money on the correct one. One, <laughs> one of yeah. those is the correct one. Nice. It's like a. <laughs> <laughs> that was fight. that was the worst way to say that, but it's yeah. okay. Peru. Yeah. Going to, I don't know. To I don't know a work. thing. I don't know a single thing about Peru except Lima. Lima, Peru. Yeah, that's it. I didn't even I'd... remember until you said it, but now it sounds very right. I only know because I read it like earlier today when I was looking at Airbnbs. <laughs> I thought you meant you read it right now off Google. <laughs> yeah, I'm, go- I'm looking at the Peru yeah, page. Peru. That sounds yeah. interesting. Uh, I wouldn't have guessed that you said Montana. No offense to any listeners mm-hmm. that may be from montana but i know literally not not a single thing about montana yeah i can't name any part of montana or anything in montana i just know that it's really pretty i think i know what it looks like and i know where it generally is but... yeah i can guess what it looks like um actually i know where it is because i know what it looks like but i just is don't it... know what is there besides... i'm gonna say it's to just... the west of north dakota uh i don't think that's right you don't think it's to the west of North Dakota? Map of USA. <laughs> Look it up, man. Is it? I don't know. I'm guessing. West, west of North Dakota? <laughs> yeah, it's to the. It's right beside North wow. Dakota. It is amazing. Nice. I'm right. Yeah, it's not where I thought it was at all. Wait, then what's to the west of Montana? Is that Washington? Yes, but there's a little sliver of Idaho there. Oh. Yeah. The top of Idaho. Okay. Yeah, the top of Idaho. Like the handle, I get it. Okay. I just thought it was the other way around. I thought North Dakota and South Dakota were way more west, but no. Hmm. Looks I like really I love nothing from the public I... education system. I didn't learn anything, especially <laughs> at our high school. Nothing. Don't get me started on our high school. Dude, we'll talk about our high school plenty later. 
Yeah, we're gonna have whole episodes dedicated to stories. Let's, from, let's save it from high school. Oh my god, high school. I mean, I do. I have very positive things about it. Very negative things overall. I think high school was our high school was very nice for being a small high school, but also preparing me well enough for college that I could literally shave a whole entire year off of my degree. Yeah, it's not crazy. Finished, yeah, I finished in three years instead of taking the full four, which didn't really seem like it would be something I could do coming from our school because our school was just. It some somehow some somehow yeah. they did it they Somewhere found the somewhere. loophole to give us a whole year of college for free yep 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 i mean it helps that i i just went to a public college in the same state that like the high school is from so i oh, could yeah. transfer all that credit really easy but regardless yeah we'll talk about that later yeah that'll be that'll be some lore for another day because this what episode, you, this can be a sleeper episode for real. Actually, it's yeah. going to be relatively popular. Episode two is going to be a big sleeper. And then <laughs> from there on, who knows? Yeah. But usually when territory. a year from now, people are going to come back and listen to this one because they're going to be like, oh, where did they start? And then they'll listen to like, Oh, I get it. I don't want to listen to any of these until episode 50. <laughs> yeah. Well, like these so, suck up to 50. Let me get into a little bit why we started this podcast. Yeah, so specifically for myself, initially, um, I'd known for probably a couple, I'd say for a couple solid years now, I've wanted to start one um, with me and uh, possibly some multiple friends from back home, but especially you, Bird, um, because I knew that I was going to be um, in college. I was going to be away from our small town, um, and I still wanted to stay in touch. Um, and then more specifically now, I'm definitely far away. I'm like super far um, down in the southwest now. So for me, wanting to start this was basically just a way to keep in touch and make sure I, I knew what was going up in people's lives back home. Um, and then I realized that why not I just go in all in on it and just make this a, a, a thing that I'm just really into, which I'm super into podcasts right now. I, I listen to a lot of them. I, I really like the format. I think the, the community around podcasts are really, um, at least in my experience, pretty positive compared to a lot of like youtube communities um, yeah i feel that because it's uncharted territory as well like i think when youtube first started it was like it like grew so exponentially and now podcasts are getting like pretty big as well um, yeah it's it's like it's new media for sure it's like different than i mean it's pretty much the same thing that we've already been uh doing like as people like talk shows have been a thing and um like yeah. radio shows and stuff but this is just so much more accessible and stuff for yeah, um, the accessible. average person like yeah. we both have a $100 mics in front of us right now mhm mm same ones yeah Believe pretty much everything. one of us <laughs> is going to have to change mm. maybe but... <laughs> I get the, maybe get the black version instead of the silver version yeah, ethan's got that <laughs> oh great yeah, we may we may have some guest appearances on the podcast from some of our other friends, um, and we can see how that goes. Um, we'll keep an eye out for what interest um, is loosely in, but at the same time, we're going to do basically what we want. Like I said, it's mostly for me just to stay in contact with people back home. I wanted to record these just because I thought they'd be fun, and I know podcasts are very popular. I love them, and I thought, why not? Just put them online. Um, and exactly. We'll see how it goes. Um, just to get them out there like this is just free expression straight from our brains and um me and you we both bounce off ideas really um really yeah. well we just it's kind of like what's that game um when, when, when you're in the room no no you're in the room and you got the the tennis ball squash <laughs> is that what it's called <laughs> squash is it, is it called squash what's it called uh you might be right that might be it that sounds familiar but i'm not sure well, we're basically a squash match. Okay, squash you. match. Not sold on the analogy, but I know where you're going. Yeah, see, it, it's, <laughs> that's all that matters. But, that is all that matters. Yeah, and um, um, we just bring out a really cool energy in each other, and it's been that way pretty much since we met. Yeah, me and Bert Way back in seventh grade. Quite a while. We were uh, you in were in the, the seventh grade. I was in the seventh grade. You were in the eighth, and we were uh, doing, we did a bunch of band together. Yeah, drum line. Um, we're, we're very musically inclined, both of us. And Bird, uh, I'll give you a chance to kind of plug your whatever you got going on right now. Your, you want to explain a little bit what your, what you like to do, um, especially sound related, uh, musically inclined. Yeah, so uh, I make music. Um, yep. So, 
it's always hard to describe it to people because it, it's not really like most other things. I would I would consider it kind of lo-fi, like music to study to. Um, yeah. At least my my um, personal music that I make by myself is I would say it's like lo-fi instrumental music. It's very bandy because mm-hmm. we're both in band and uh, that's yeah. a big uh, um a big inspiration for me and then i would also consider it like video game music because um most of my favorite music growing up has been like video game music like yeah. halo and viva pinata those two <laughs> come to mind yeah. See, viva pinata that soundtrack bangs viva pinata. you ever I, play that I, game i never played it but i also have not like thought of that in a very long time but it's awesome no, never played that one but yeah so yeah bird's super into music production and sound editing which is perfect for podcasting as well um and we were super inspired by being a band of music and also uh like audio lab and sound engineering uh bird got way more into it than i did um i kind of went more yeah. of the writing route since i was always Which super we, into writing and reading um we got super lucky in high school because um our band teacher taught an audio class yeah our band which teacher. is crazy compared like that any other school I've ever heard of, nobody's ever had like an audio yeah, engineering no. class. Yeah, and I got three years of it. Oh, so good. So I know what I'm doing. I, I know one. what I know what <laughs> equalization is and compression. I know what those are. <laughs> equalization. I know what a limiter is. No, I, I really don't. All I remember from that class was just <laughs> making sounds, making foley, just like beating on and sheets. That was the funnest thing. Yeah. What Dude, that Lord of the Rings project. So basically for the viewers out there who obviously don't know what we're talking about, there was a a project we would do for our final and we did it um, the first and the second year. And we were given uh, scenes from the Lord of the Rings films. Fellowship of the Ring was uh, the first one, the first project, right? Yeah, it's a great movie. I've only seen one and a half of those movies still to this day. I watched them at your house and we fell asleep. Yeah, it's very long, very, very long movies. (laughs) Yeah, we fell asleep halfway through the second one. Oh, they're so long. But yeah. uh yeah, we had a project where we were given the scene where they're tearing down the big wooden door in the mine. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's where it starts. And, uh, yeah. Mines of Moria. <laughs> yeah, the mines of Moria. Um the, yeah, uh, so the they were tearing it down, coming. cave trolls coming in. We had yeah. to record every single sound in that scene and then yep. put it in and uh, redo it. Uh we had to like the, the jingle of like the armor. We had to do all of the like arrow shots. We had to do all the sword clashing, all the sound like for the troll mm-hmm. itself, like it's screaming and everything. Oh. Uh, I do not envy whoever was like. <laughs> part of that. Do you like that troll noise? I do. <laughs> Who was in charge? Were you in charge? What what part were you in charge of for? Yeah, I was your- in charge of um, a lot of stuff because I finished mine early and I got to do other one. But I'm pretty sure I just oh. did like general foley and like footsteps and clanks and stuff i didn't we do the, weapons yeah we got the same one which was, yeah, very, that was yeah, fun. very easy to do but it was fun yeah i, remember I finished that and I, I, oh, you the you talk. Troll. yeah the troll had to oh. had to have like so much layering and like distortion and i don't even know how you could think about trying to go about that but the guy like in our group uh he did he did pretty good on it like we had a couple people working on it or a few but dude the troll was the funniest thing yeah because first you had to put in your own sounds of just being gross be like but then you also had to mix it up with like animals and slow it down and pitch shift it and stuff yeah it's crazy (laughs) but yeah so we were super inspired by all that from audio lab as well and then we also have a very big influence like you mentioned earlier from video games we're super into video games Uh, we're a couple of gamers gamer nerds i love video game music in particular um Favorite soundtrack, favorite. go. Elder Scrolls. It's my yeah. favorite soundtrack. Which one? Um, I love all of them, so it's very hard to pick. It's like picking the favorite child that I don't have. I love I'm Marvel's gonna music. I'm going to Oblivion. I love Oblivion's music and I love Skyrim's music. Like There's something Skyrim, special about it. Skyrim had very, very good dynamic kind of like music for me. Uh Marwin is more nostalgic and Oblivion it just has really solid music too. It's all yeah, just a think... very, very solid vibe mm-hmm. that that soundtrack has. It's just very f- fantasy, but it because there's so much dead space in that game where you're just exploring, yeah. and there's so much to do where you are ending up just like listening to the music. And Oblivion has the most like kind of like whimsical music, I think. 
yeah and it might be a nostalgia thing like you said but um because like oblivion was my first elder scrolls game i assume morrowind was yours but um <laughs> oblivion like there's something so freaking special about that music yeah like you just hear it Very and you're good. like this is a an entire thing that has encapsulated in my brain somehow like yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. you could get an entire just wave of images and emotions just by hearing one song yeah Absolutely. like i can I, I see the loading screens every time i hear an oblivion song i, I can see mm-hmm. all the loading screens and and all the weird stuff that was in there. i didn't even see like 90 percent of that game like yeah. when i was young i i played like i played it for hours but i didn't see like any of it because i just kept dying and doing the <laughs> bullshit the whole Dude, time like i wasn't actually doing single. anything in that game yeah literally <laughs> just running around and just fucking with like the the people in the town and just like putting i remember remember there was like a cheat where you could put paint brushes into the air and you could jump on them because they wouldn't they wouldn't fall to the ground they would just stay in midair and you could literally just like build the whole structures out of paint brushes really I, I, wild, I never saw any of that that's cool wild game yeah but yeah so super inspired by video game music as well and video games in general down the down the line we're probably gonna have several podcasts where we'll talk about um our, our favorite games maybe some top tens uh we talk about games forever um and for whoever whoever is not interested in games uh you can skip those we'll be talking about other stuff too personal stories me and bird have very uh very interesting lives and a lot of fun stories to tell from back in high school i got some fun college stories for sure yeah, yeah, I was I was thinking like recently somebody was asking me, like, what's the most interesting thing about you or what's the craziest thing you've ever done? And I was realizing I was like, I've got a lot of stories. Yeah. So yeah. it's perfect that we have a podcast and I can actually share these stories. Yeah, we'll keep them as uh, as limited as we can, but as also as juicy and in-depth, and we'll skim the surface just for you. <laughs> just just enough. Just for you, yeah. you listening right now. Yeah, you. <laughs> don't, don't get that close to me oh i'm sorry i'm sorry personal uh, space we need to socially yeah, distance during these times socially distance yeah can't wait for all this to be over by the same time uh it's like i get it there's there's a lot of a lot of good stuff a lot of bad stuff um i don't think i'll talk too much about it since there's so much going on but at the same time oh, yeah. there's it's hard to avoid it um so we will be talking about it because that's the, that's basically like we've been talking about the new normal for now when this first like it started really is. Back it in, is like, uh, February. No, it was March. Like February into something, March. Something like that. It seemed like all of this happened like in one day, like one or two days. It just all yeah. Isn't that weird? But it's been like two months now or so of just like yeah, no. hearing about it all day every day. Like if you talk to anybody, it's all they talk about pretty but much. At first it was just like stories coming out of China and thinking yeah, like that it wasn't going to really affect us too much because they would be able to contain it, et cetera. Right, et cetera. Nothing's ever affected us like Ebola and all this other yeah. stuff. Like we usually like one person, one American gets it and we're, we find the cure or something. Ebola, swine so flu. Put I it remember into what, it immediately. Do you remember back in school when H1N1 was a thing yeah. and you had to get the like vaccination for it at school? I was in sixth grade and I don't remember a vaccine, but I'm sure it actually happened. And that's did, weird. Yeah, so I, I the reason that I remember so specifically is because they gave us a choice. I was too young to choose this on my own. I don't know why they made us choose. But they let you either get a shot in your arm or they let you get a nasal spray. And at the time, I was like, like what, probably in fifth grade then if you were in sixth. But give and me a nasal was, spray, dude. I was so I was so afraid to get a shot because I knew it hurt from the doctor. So I was like, yeah, I'll get the nasal spray. That sounds fun. It was the worst decision I've ever made. Really? It was so weird. Like they shoot like the liquid up into your nose and it doesn't smell good first of all but then it just like trickles into like your throat and all over your like your sinuses and you're not allowed to sneeze for like basically the whole day until it like fully sets in because if you uh-huh. sneeze you're sneezing the virus onto people so what? you weren't allowed to sneeze for the whole day and it was yeah, so the, the, tickling the your vaccine nose the vaccine is the virus yeah so it was tickling your nose the whole time you want to sneeze but you can't and it just felt so weird and it was yeah it was not the best but, I think I yeah, got, I, I think I got a shot. Probably. I, I think most I people did. Know. I don't know. Um, I really don't well, remember much about anything before seventh grade. Yeah. So I wonder if that's how like kids are going to be like 
interpreting kind of what's going on now like yeah are, are they even going to perceive like what's happening and once the vaccination comes out they'll just get the vaccination and then it's pretty much over like what happened with h1n1 because yeah. when i was a kid there was there was like talk about h1n1 but i was too young to be like conscious enough to care about it and then the vac the vaccination mm -hmm. came out and we just took it and that was the end of it so i just wonder for like a kid's perspective that's kind of what it's going to be like well, I think about it this way. There's a big difference between these two things. Um, first, this one's way bigger and everywhere now. But yeah. also, I think this also probably has something to do with how big it's gotten, too. It's just um, social media is way, way larger than it was uh, 10 years ago. So I think that has something to do with, first, kids knowing more about it and yeah. like it being more relevant to them. Unlike H1Z1 wasn't very relevant to us. We just kind of made pig jokes because we were in sixth grade. <laughs> H1Z1. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> H uh, the game H one N one. Um, yeah. I mean, we were probably talking about that game in seventh or eighth grade. Probably, yeah. H one N one. Yeah. Yeah, H one N one. Um, it wasn't very relevant to us. Um, but I do think social media has had a huge part of this, making it like bigger and um spreading the panic a lot more. Yeah, I think so. Everybody's on, it. and we talked about this a lot in the demo. It's just everybody's yeah. on social media, and, and um, I think it, it's changed our society. Yeah, the media in general as well is also just really, really focusing like super heavily on it and spreading like so many like different views based on their like political affiliation, basically. Yeah. Which is me as someone, honestly, when I was younger, well, not even that much younger, but in high school, I was pretty, for some reason, like excited to be able to grow up and kind of get myself involved in politics and be able to kind of determine who I was as a person. And was I going to be a Democrat or Republican, left, right, blah, blah, blah. What was that all going to entail? But it seemed exciting because it seemed like, um, like there were two separate kind of like paths that people take. And some people are in the center for sure. You can kind of be more neutral and be uh, independent. Um, but it just like that kind of like uh, dynamic seemed like something that would be more of a positive thing around like the 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 discourse around politics as opposed to how like toxic that i've realized that it is once i've gotten older and i just hate seeing like the 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 difference of of the republican versus democratic or right and left media and how you it seems like you have to have a particular view if you're like a democrat or a particular view if you're a republican and therefore your corresponding media is that it just doesn't make sense to me. It just seems too divisive. Yeah, it's it's a little too absolute. And yeah. um, I hate it. Honestly, I can't stand it. Um, to the point where now I completely ignore all of it. Yeah. And I, I, I like to think that I'm like pretty much in the middle. I might lean a little right uh, economically. Who knows? I yeah. really don't know at all. <laughs> I just yeah. know what I'm told that each party stands for. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I haven't done my own research. I'm not nearly educated enough to even like. I don't vote. Man, I, yeah, I know I should. I should vote, but I don't. I don't really consider myself um, qualified yeah. enough to it's vote funny. appropriately. I, I literally tried. Like, I was. I was so excited to like vote for like actually primaries this year. I was going to vote for mm -hmm. uh, Democratic primaries because I'm. I'm. I think I would consider myself a little bit like you. I'm, at least from my what my understanding of it is, I would be more uh, economically Republican and more socially democratic. But I still wanted to to be put my part into the democratic primaries this year as far as like choosing what the democratic candidate is going to be. But by the mm -hmm. time that came around, I was in one the process of graduating, two in the process of moving, three in the process of the crisis and <laughs> like voting was suspended, they had all different like policies, you had to like do it by mail and with me moving and me submitting like my my form, my absentee ballot form to like my local voting place. I didn't even know where to do it because I was moving. And once I did do it, they said it was just returned to them. And they called me. They were like angry on the phone that I sent them the wrong address. And I told them <laughs> I gave them the right address. I don't know why I went back. And just the whole process just basically went to a standstill. And I just lost all my interest in voting because of all what's going on. And it just seemed way too difficult because I didn't want to go in person to vote because what's the point? I didn't want to get sick when I go to vote. And uh, it's got to be gross there too. From, yeah, doing it from home just seemed like a hassle because I was moving. So it just was bad timing for me this year. So I just didn't get to do the primaries. But I'm definitely going to vote as long as it's straightforward enough um, in the in the uh, presidential 
election later in November. So who you who you voting for? Not sure. If that's, that's not too, if that's not too personal. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it as not sure. That's uh, I think that's that's about as far as I'm gonna get. Leave it. Ask me. I, how, who you voting for? Okay, so this is a this is a weighted question. It's tough. Um, yeah. So let's say let's assume that the two different candidates are gonna be Trump versus Biden. Third yeah. party doesn't exist. I'm sorry to say it, folks. Really? I wish it did. I wish there F, were three parties. F's in the independent party out there. F's, F's in, the, in chat. the chat for the independent party. But <laughs> so if it's down between Trump and Biden, that's a very funny election. Because <laughs> vote, I don't want to vote for either, to be honest. And not for the same reason of not wanting to vote for Hillary or Trump, because that's a way different reason. Are, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm with you so far. <laughs> I agree with everything. Yeah. Now Go this ahead. one, it's just like, which i don't even know which would be worse yeah because so, like we could yeah. you you go you go to put it into perspective i mentioned <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna vote in the democratic primaries like to basically every one of the people that was like running as a democrat that i wanted just slowly got knocked out one by one like my favorite would be say i i really liked some somebody gang gang. like uh I was I, I kind of liked Andrean. I like some of his stuff. Um, I, I think he would have been actually not too bad. Um, so I definitely just a normal more, dude. Yeah, and he I liked his like his economic like uh, like one thousand dollars a month or whatever ended up being something that they're talking about anyway now. So yeah, um, and he just seems like that's a very, real, that's like, really what I want. He seems like the twenty first century candidate. He just seems like very like um, yeah smart for what's going on right yeah now. he so is I, I he's, like he's really he's really um educated he's um a normal dude he seems like he has people's best interest in mind and like actually using like knowledge and information to like get these ideas yeah. across and not just like try to persuade people like a politician would just try to like trick people almost yeah so i, I kind of bounced around to like which ones were just kept getting knocked out i thought amy klobuchar was was pretty moderate and i liked a lot of her stuff her vibe was really never cool. never heard of her yeah, a lot of people didn't haven't even heard of her because they don't like, pay <laughs> too much attention to all of it. And she she was definitely one of like the the like the underdog for a long time, and then and she, she ended up dropping out. Um, I was I was a Bernie guy for quite a while there, um, but then Bernie it kind of got, got muddled, and then he he ended up dropping out. Um, I will say that I Joe Biden was probably my last choice. But I just yeah, don't that's, know. That's that not. one doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, it's it's all it's all politics and I've learned that. And um I'm learning to basically just not get myself invested as much as I thought that I was excited to do, which is very sad to say. Mm -hmm. Like the democratic system and voting and stuff in the US is very important, or is it? And yeah. it's <laughs> it's just not worth my time, I think. No, Honestly, no, I'm exactly on the same page. It's not worth your time. Because I, yeah. I was serious about investing my time into this like mm -hmm. uh, presidential election cycle. I liked certain candidates, didn't like other ones. And I thought it was, I thought that my opinion would also be the majority of what other people thought because I would consider myself as a generally decent, nice human being and uh, intellectual, if I may you're, say so. You're assuming that most... You're assuming most of the country is nice, intellectual, uh, decent human beings. Just general. Just generally, yeah. And I just thought... Yeah, you would that, like to hope that. That's what I always think that way. I'm like, oh, yeah, people wouldn't do this. People wouldn't And I that. thought that they would have their minds open and they'd be... I think the biggest thing for me is I look at both sides of the media. I look at mm -hmm. um, critical media and I look at supportive media for all candidates. Like, genuinely, I do. All oh. the ones that I was interested in, I looked at the bad side and the good side. And that's I think that's what's important. Yeah, and I saw that about Bernie. I saw all the bad stuff about Bernie, and I see why people don't mm -hmm. like him. And I saw all the good stuff, and I see why people like him. And in the end, I just agreed that the positives outweigh the negatives for me personally. Um, but Ooh, can I talk I about mean, Bernie real quick? I want to talk. Yeah, to, I yeah. want to say some stuff about Bernie. Yeah. So, um, a few minutes ago, I said Bernie is a genius. Now, let me uh, let me explain why I think Bernie is a genius. Now, I don't think he's a genius politically or economically or anything like that. I think mm -hmm. he's um, a genius in the way that he ran his campaign, because. Mm -hmm. The way that I saw it from the like outside through the looking glass, because I'm not really I don't watch any news at all. Yeah. But what I saw Bernie do is run for president in 2016, 
get a huge fan base running with hashtags, feel the burn, all this stuff. Got a <laughs> diehard fan base feel, selling feel yeah. merch, merch out the ass. Capital M merch. Lost the election. Yeah. Oh, Hillary rigged the election. <laughs> and then and then everybody is like, I hate Hillary. Feel the burn. Now 2020 rolls around. All those people, they want the vengeance. Bernie's back. Mm-hmm. Feel the burn part two. He runs. Mm-hmm. He's kicking butt, it seems like. Like he, he did, did the Joe Rogan podcast um a couple years ago. Does all the stuff. He's running a hot yeah. media streak. Yeah. Obviously, um, both sides are running slander on him because they don't like Bernie. They don't want him in. I get yeah. it. I don't know. I don't understand his politics at all. I don't understand any politics. I don't want to talk about that. But yeah. what he did do is run a hell of a campaign, got way more merch sales. All these people ran campaigns and commercials saying, I need your help. And then got all this money, bails on the election. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Runs. He's got the bag over the shoulder. He's taking the money and running. Mm-hmm. And now he's rich. And that's that's why Bernie's a genius. And I don't know if he did it on purpose or not, but it worked out in his favor. And I, I applaud him. He's yeah, a great yeah. guy for that. Yeah. So t- what is it? TDLR. Uh, the end of the end of end of basically our session on politics is yeah. who cares? Who cares anymore? It's just yeah. all it's all muddled and it's it's it is what it is now. And uh, I've lost interest, basically. So I'm done. Oh, politics, <laughs> politics now, like going forward, especially once Trump wins again, gets four more years. And then after Trump, I can't yeah. even imagine an after Trump America, post Trump America, what's going to mm-hmm. happen like to our political system, because then we're going to have a new Democratic uh, candidate and a Republican candidate that are both going to try to out Trump each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're mm-hmm. both going to try to Trump each other be, by being mm-hmm. Donald Trump. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy thing to witness. Yeah. So uh, that's our that's our view on politics. Uh, unless something major happens, like the the election this November or whatever, or something stupid happens in the next few months or whatever, we try to keep it <laughs> try to keep it to minimal with politics because our our stance is pretty clear. At least I made it clear that I was super invested, and now I just don't yeah. really care anymore. So. Just wanted to get yeah. that out of the way. And uh, I think if we're going to talk about politics, I think it's going to probably stay in a comedic tone. Yeah, I think so too. Like neither, neither of us really care about what's going on because we understand it's ultimately out of our hands. Yeah. But I mean, on the other hand, now that we have a podcast, we can actually influence a pretty large group of people politically if we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we're huge. <laughs> I'm one. just saying... Yeah, five yeah. years from now who knows yeah so we we are hoping to have this podcast go on for for quite a long time and yeah. i think i think it'll be fun um we'll keep it lighthearted um as much as we can um this was kind of the first we'll consider this the the real the real demo since the last one was more for a class project wait is this episode one this will be episode one yeah i'll have to come up of, with a uh a title the, and everything. <laughs> the grove grotto show what's the name of our What's the name hollow, of our show? Hollow, hollow Grove, Grove Grotto, Grotto show. show. Yeah. It's the um, Hollow Grove Grotto Show. Yeah, so emphasis on the so it's gonna be Hollow Grove Grotto Show. You know. Wait, it's the, the Hollow right Grove the, the Hollow Grove Grotto Show. I don't know about the I mean Okay, I guess sorry. Not. The <laughs> I mean <laughs> the doesn't have to be in the title. Yeah, we'll we see. don't we don't need any well, articles. It's all experimentation right now, but that's Hollow what Grove with. Grotto Show. We're I can't wait in... to see the first T-shirt. Yeah, we're super into caves and we're super into uh, our history, Na- nature, and and grove. Groves. Yeah, growing up in in nature like we did, and uh, and uh, I feel hollow and depressed on the inside. No, it's <laughs> ditto. It's more about. It's more about the uh, the sonic, the sonics of being hollow, and also the idea of a, a grotto in a cave being hollow. You're talking about the acoustics. Acoustics, yeah, like my acoustic guitar sitting here. Yeah, it's hollow, and uh, there's a grotto inside. Yeah. That, that, who, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would consider this one a success bird. Um, Let's wrap it up, please. Yeah. We kind of talked, we talked <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of stuff, dipped in and out. Uh, we'll see how it goes in the future. Thanks for listening. Um, yeah, this, again, this was honestly a pleasant time. Yeah, but it's fun. We're going to continue it no matter what now. So uh, be on the lookout. We'll try to get this podcast out on as many platforms as possible. Um, yeah, check it out on Podbean. 
<laughs> yeah, Podbean. We're probably going to go with that. Um, and then we'll put it on main directories like Apple Podcast, iTunes, stuff like that, Spotify, hopefully. YouTube. We'll be branching out hopefully to YouTube uh, and also Twitch. Like we said, we'll probably be doing some gaming and stuff. And maybe oh, just I can't some, wait for some, some right. live podcasts. Yeah. So uh, keep a lookout for the uh, Hollow Grove Grotto show and uh, maybe even some Hollow Grove Grotto gaming. So Hollow Grove Grotto show live. Yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody, for listening and for tuning in for this first uh, real episode. And uh, I hope you come back next time. Uh, My name is Al, and this is... Hey, I'm Bird, and this is the Hollow Grove Grotto Show. show. Bye-bye. Deuces, folks. See ya. Hollow Grove. Hollow Grove. Hollow Grove. Hollow Grove Grotto Show. Hollow Grove. Hollow Grove. Hollow Grove. Hollow Grove Grotto Show.